Hello and welcome back to Warriors HQ. Coming up on the show, we have the return of the analysis section and day three of the SP Energy Networks Warriors Championship. But first, we're going to look forward to Zebre and our trip to Italy this weekend. And Jason O'Halloran, Matt Fagerson and Rory Jackson all spoke to the press earlier this week. Jason, coming into this one off the back of a fantastic result against Connacht, what's the mood like in the camp at the moment? Oh, very buoyant. You know, we played some really nice rugby at times and we were wary that Connacht are a very good side and... Um, I think they've had seven losses and had six bonus points out of that, so to, to beat them by a good margin was, was a really good fillet for our, our young players. In especially doing it, obviously, given the, the number of absences and injuries that Warriors have at the moment. Yeah, that's right, but we'll, we've got a policy of next man up here, and you know we've been confident throughout the, the time when the internationals have been away that that young group, uh, they really they enjoy this time of year. It's an opportunity for them to play, and they know, uh, given our, our previous selection uh, criteria, that if they play well, they have every chance to, to be around when the European stuff comes back. Uh, yeah, I think um, you're know, obviously very happy with uh, with the bonus point win over Connor, um, but um, we're not we're not taking it lightly. Um, you know, the Zebra's going to be really tough, uh, especially at home going out there. So yeah, we're um, we're preparing really well this week. It was great. Uh, a lot of young guys come on, and we. Caught, uh, brought a bit of separation between us and Connor, who were nibbling away at our heels, and um, to put this, um, put them away so quite so, as emphatically as we did was was a great testament to the, the way the guys are playing. And we've had two good wins so far in the last last couple of weeks, and this little period of three games, we want to finish on a high, and we know how tough it's going to be out in Zebra, but we're uh, pretty confident we can go over there and pick up the win. Yeah, Benetton gave us a real good reminder of just how tough the Italian sides are now. They're a lot fitter, a lot better organised, and we're, we're expecting the Zebra will get a few back from the Italian squad, so they're going to be a very tough nut for us. Yeah, no, we got a bit of a shock last time we went to Benetton, and, uh, and you know, Zebra are, are exactly the same, and, and the crowds they get at home and the buzz they can, they, they can make is, um, is pretty massive. So, yeah, we know it's going to be a massive challenge, um, and, yeah, we just don't want to don't get caught out again like we did last time. Obviously, an important game for Warriors. A huge game, personally, though. Your 150th for the for the club. What would it mean to make 150 appearances? And what does the club mean to you? Yeah, well, it's. Yeah, I mean, it's just. I love this club. Um, I never thought a few years ago that I'd be making 150 after leaving, and I wasn't sure whether I'd ever come back or not. And so to come back and to to be playing as much rugby as I have over the last couple of years, I think um, I've just been really enjoying it and, and loving loving my time back here. And to make 150, it's. Uh, yeah, it's a real pleasure and, and an honour, but um, the most important thing is we get that win and we can celebrate with some, some red wine afterwards. Rory Jackson could make his 150th appearance for the club in Italy, so keep an eye on all of our channels tomorrow for team announcement plus reaction from head coach Dave Rennie. Dave has also selected four players to be McRae Financial Services Warrior of the Month for February. Tim Swinson, Brandon Thompson, Kyle Stain and George Turner have all been nominated, so head over to Twitter now to vote. Yesterday saw day three of the SP Energy Networks Warriors Championship come to Scotstoun with Balfron High qualifying for the semi-finals. Here's a look back over the day. It's just a different kind of sport that I'm used to. I usually play football and like that, but rugby's a bit different and I like that about it. It's just the, it's just the adrenaline running to go score a try, it's really good. And what are your strengths as players? What's your strength? I've got the, got enough pace and strength to get down the wing. And yourself? I've got the strength for the rocks and to get past people and score the tries. And do you enjoy playing rugby? Yes, I really enjoy it. Yeah, what do you like about it? Um, I like tackling. Um, and I like tackling too. And it's good teamwork as well. Good teamwork. Like rugby, it's a good experience for everybody. It makes you laugh if you're upset. Anybody that wants to join rugby, it's a good sport. It keeps you fit as well. So It's really fun to play with, so you can meet new people as well. Gary, third year in this competition and the third year of qualifying, you must be delighted. Absolutely delighted. Really nice to be back. Last year, I found it a bit tougher. We only made it to the semi-finals, so really felt we had a point to prove coming back this year and qualifying for this year's semi-finals. And you were saying earlier that you think the the competitive nature of the competition has gone up again this year. Definitely. I think even looking back to last year and the year before, the standard is getting higher and higher. There's a lot of schools that maybe weren't here last year or two years ago and they're coming and they're competing. They're not just turning up, which is great for everyone. And obviously the, the girls game in Scotland is really developing as well, which is massively encouraging, isn't it? Really, really positive. I've coached the girls at Balfron for about six years now and just seen the, 
the opportunities that are there for them, you know, national development, you know, we've got regional teams now, Scotland Sevens and things for the girls, it's really, really good that there's somewhere for the really talented girls to go and even progress even more. And hopefully you've reached the semi-finals, you've reached the final, hopefully you can maybe go one better and win the trophy this year? I'd be delighted, it would really would be third time lucky if we managed that, so just need to keep fingers crossed and see what the semi-final has to offer and take it from there for us. Friday night saw the return of the Guinness Pro 14 to Scotsdam with a 43-17 victory over Connacht. Earlier today, Jason O'Halloran took me through some of our nice attacking play in the return of the analysis section. Yeah. We got off to a flying start with George Horn's try, but the try we're going to look at wasn't from long range. It was much more hard work and talk us through what we're looking at here. Well, ultimately, we're, we're, tr we're trying to create some tempo in this part of the field. Now, we've, we've found over Christmas in particular, we got very static ball in the scoring zone. and. You know, we're at our best when the rucks are quite quick, so try to focus on some basics around a ball carry, low body height and getting latches on early and, and just trying to play the, the game a little bit quicker. So we see this first carry here. We get hit pretty much at the gain line, but what we do really well is latch on and continue to get some leg drive and we get a, an extra two or three metres there, which in this part of the field is crucial. Uh, off the back of that, we get a pick and go from Siwa. Uh, stop now, Greg. So C was really good in this area in terms of his, his ability to get really low. Would have, would have liked some more leg drive out of him there, obviously, but he's won the battle of the body height. We just need to, again, focus on some leg drive. Uh, but we're, we're pretty much sweet there. Just a little thing technically there. We'd obviously like to keep our feet. Uh, fortunately, they didn't have anybody over the ball. I think had they had somebody over the ball more aggressively and we go off our feet like that, there's potentially a penalty there. So again, try and reiterate good uh, habits around this area. And we probably wouldn't be that wrapped with how we end up off our feet there. But... Um, Moving on from there, we get a great little snipe there from George Horn, which is so good at which again gets us in behind. And ultimately, this is just around Swino, uh, hit and spin, uh, getting a couple of mates on board. And I think s and team will be wrapped with that about ability to rip through your core, be really strong in a, in a low body position and, and twist and turn your way over the line. So again, that, that's not all great. There's elements that could be a lot better there, but the, the tempo we're able to, to exert on the game and the fact that we, we scored basically a, a very blunt type of try uh, was an improvement on what we've been doing over Christmas for sure. Our next clip is us attacking from slightly deeper. Talk us through this. Well, this is a play we thought we thought may work with the way they defend the back of the lineout that we might be able to expose, particularly uh, the sort of the, the lifting prop etc. out the back of this lineout. So it's a six plus one, and, and often with us with six plus one teams expect us to play wide, as we do have a couple of, uh, of bus plays where we play wide. So we were sort of relying on them maybe overplaying that aspect of our attack. So ball down, Tom Gordon rips, stop now. Uh, just notice the dummy line here from George Horn back to the front of the line out, just to try and interest these two defenders here and, and, and make it a clearer passage on the open side. Tom gives the cheese, stop now. Uh, cheese gets nice and wide, which obviously drags the prop and then opens up a bit of a hole for, for Robbie Nen. We also have Stafford on the outside here running a hard sort of a, a, an in line. Mm -hmm. uh, Robbie breaches. This is done pretty well from Robbie, and I think in the end it's a good decision not to pass. As I think there's a, a defender on Stafford's tail there, but if that defender doesn't work so hard, then potentially in, in weeks to follow, if we play the same play, there might, might be a passing option there. We, we may score from the strike. Uh, but again, if we can get 15 metres of go forward in that part of the field, it becomes very tough for defences, and this led to a try after another sort of 18 or 90 phases, um, uh, funnily enough, to Robbie Nairn off a tempo pick. So. Yeah, the quality of that strike really got us on the front foot in a, in a crucial part of the field. Well. Thanks for watching Warriors HQ. There's a break in domestic proceeding after the Zebra game, so there'll be no Warriors HQ for a couple of weeks, but you can keep up to date with everything at Scotson by downloading Warriors Weekly on Apple Podcasts, Acast, and every other podcast platform. Tickets for our next home game against the Cheaters are available now at glasgowarriors.org. And before that, Scotland women will be facing Wales at Scotston. You can get tickets for that at scottishrugby.org. Until next time on Warriors HQ, thanks for tuning in.